I think it's safe to say a lot of us are here for different reasons, perhaps slight variations, different reasons, but it is a real, just a real thrill to see all of you who made the trip, either from a block away or many miles away. We have to coalesce, we have to focus our message. This is not Republican, this is not Democrat, the message, but the message has been, has been lost and now it's coming back. And I thoroughly believe that through the uh, vehicle of these tea parties across the country, conservatives are finding their voice and getting the message out. So thank you for being here. Along that line, I would like to take just a moment to read the certificate of representation that all of you uh, perhaps have signed already when you showed up. I believe this has gone a long way to focusing the message and the purpose of these gatherings across the country. This is not the first time this message has been used, so I'd just like to read it without further ado. We, the people of the United States of America, hereby call upon all those whom we have elected to serve as our local, state, and federal representatives to stop the endless spending that has placed an undue burden on the people they are elected to serve and has placed our nation in great peril. This gathering of the citizens at the Mabel Tea Party on this, the fourth day of July, 2009, is to protest high taxes and suppression of freedoms. It shall be said that we hereby wish to send a loud and clear united message to those who are elected to serve the citizens of this great nation. It shall be said that the people hereby call upon our elected representatives to listen to our voices and heed the united message of the people at this Mayville Tea Party. The time has come for common sense to prevail. We, the people, demand that our representatives honor this, the greatest of all nations, by following the will and text of the United States Constitution, which was created by our founding fathers for the benefit of us, their descendants, and that our representatives use those monies collected from American citizens in the form of taxes to support only those necessities outlined in the U.S. Constitution. Let it further be known that our representatives work for the people and therefore should not be involved in the accumulation of riches and power for themselves while serving an elected office, but rather use their God-given talents to be effective, limited-term representatives, at which time they should be willing to step down to allow others to serve the country in such capacity as well. Let it be known that our founding fathers did not intend elected office to be a means to attain a lifelong career, but a means to serve the nation and her citizens. The time has come for our representatives to be held accountable for limiting our freedoms, multiplying our debt, and failing to consider future generations of American citizens. Please take a copy with you. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. He said to his friend, if the British march by land or sea from the town tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the old north church tower as a signal light. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. My friends, it's that time again. <laughs> It's time to be up and alert. It's time to arm ourself, ourselves with facts and information that is true with regards to the state of our nation. If you are familiar with the facts surrounding the story of Paul Revere's ride, you will know a few frustrating details. The people waited until the last possible moment, almost too long, to spread the alarm. By the time of Mr. Revere's ride, the government had long been overtaxing the people without proper representation. The government's minions had been intimidating its citizens and even quartering themselves in their homes without permission. At the time of the famous ride, government had been encroaching for so long and so steadily 
that the citizens had kind of grown accustomed to it. A lot of people said, oh, this will pass. Others said, we'll get through this, we always have before. But what too many were saying was, we might lose just a few of our rights, but we'll be okay. My friends, government encroachment and the suppression or loss of even one of our rights is not okay. It's time to be up and alert to what is happening at every local, every level of your government. It's time to arm ourselves with facts. It's time to spread the alarm. Our president, in the name of stimulus and recovery and cap and trade, is taking our country on a forced death march from whence we cannot return. We will not return unless more people who share the principles upon which this country was founded take action and take action now. People who share the principles that say certain rights are unalienable, which means they cannot be granted or taken away by our government. Principles that say the purpose of government is not to provide for us, but to protect us and to protect those unalienable rights which we were endowed, which were endowed by our creator, period. It's noteworthy that back then it was not someone else who fixed things. It was the country folk from every Middlesex village and farm. They were regular people, just like you, just like me. It no longer worked to wait for someone else to fix things. It was the ragtag army of General Washington who, with God's help, pushed back and defeated the largest and best trained army in the world. They realized then, as we do now, that we are the someone else. My friends, it's that time again. And I'm proud to be a member of Phil, Jane, and Lordine's Ragtag Tea Party Army. How about you? Yeah. Folks, I firmly, com I, I firmly believe that government has not failed the people. People have failed the government because here people are the government. Our government process is the most beautiful political model on the planet. It just needs to be repopulated. So I am here today to beseech you, and you, and you, and you, and you, to run for public office to help repopulate that political orchard that has been overrun by bad trees. If you want to make a difference in this world, I'm serious, get elected to a school board. Run for a seat on your village board or council. Run for mayor. Run for county board. Run for state assembly. Run for U.S. Congress. Run for U.S. Senate. Run for president. My friends, run for something before someone else runs away with our country. <laughs> So through the night rode Paul Revere, and so through the night went his cry of alarm to every Middlesex village and farm, a cry of defiance and not of fear, a voice in the darkness, a knock at the door, and a word that shall echo forevermore. For born on the night wind of the past, through all our history to the last, in the hour of darkness and peril and need, the people will waken and listen to hear the hurrying hoofbeats of that steed and the midnight message of Paul Revere. My friends, it's that time again. Thank you and God bless.